Big back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Hendrix. Let's get into it, man. We're still on Olympic break. Um, I did say that I wanted to do some more videos and take advantage of the time on Olympic break. Where the hell has this year gone? It's August. <sighs> that shit's crazy to me. Anyway, it's August, so that means the women's college basketball season is right around the corner. That's what prompted me. I was looking at, um, since... Uh, the Pac-12, some of the Pac-12, former Pac-12 teams are going to be in the Big Ten this season. I was looking at what teams are going to be playing in the area so I can get some tickets early on and go. So I was just looking up. I guess I got caught up in some of the mock drafts, uh, some of the players, uh, women's college basketball players who I was looking forward to seeing who's on this team, who's on what team. So I kind of just got caught up in the college basketball scheme again. And I was like, we're only a couple September, October November, we're only about three months away from the women's college basketball season taking off. So I was just like, you know, why not, to, again, use this Olympic break as a way to just catch up on some um, catch up on some videos and some videos of uh, video ideas I've had circulating in my mind for a while. So I figured, why not do this one? I think this one would be kind of fun because I can, you know, have some fun editing and throw in some clips and stuff like that and give my opinion on these videos. So this video, as y'all saw on the title this is these are the top five players i'm going to do my top five list this is my list this is not a um top five power ranking list the top five best players i might do that later but this is just my list this is who i'm really looking to i'm really looking to watch and hopefully catch a few games from if they if they're in the area maybe cop a few tickets you know check them out but these are these are my players right here this is my top five and the reason i wanted to do this video also was because i think some of these players aren't getting the spotlight that they should be getting one two they they kind of were covered by you know caitlin clark and the angel reese and all that hype you know, and that followed them into the WNBA as well. But a lot of these players didn't get that coverage last year, even though they were going absolutely stupid. So these, it is, this is not just my top five, but these are players I feel like everyone should know a little bit more of, which is why I'm sharing it. You get what I'm saying? Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. At number one, at number one on my list, I do I don't understand this this player right here actually makes me so mad at women's basket women's college basketball media in the spotlight. It actually makes me pissed off because you can have a player like her her caliber of player should have the spotlight on her just like just like she was a Caitlin Clark or Juju Watkins or Angel Reese. This player right here, some of y'all might not have even might not have even heard of her, yet she spent the entire season kicking the ACC's ass as a freshman and not just the ACC, but basically the entire country as a freshman who's undersized if you will. This is probably the most misleading undersized guard you've ever heard of in your life. Her name is Hannah Hidalgo. If you follow me on this channel, you know how much a fan I am of Hannah Hidalgo. I think I think in a world where Elizabeth Kitley wasn't in the ACC last season, Hannah Hidalgo probably would have won ACC Player of the Year. Um, I still have her as ACC Player of the Year. There's no way you can tear up the ACC. Nobody have an answer for you and you don't win it. But again, if Liz Kitley wasn't in the ACC last season, a freshman would have won ACC Player of the Year. And damn near, if Caitlin Clark and Juju Watkins didn't have the years they had, she could have been competing for Player of the Year as well. Hannah Hidalgo, I am not off the Hannah Express we are on this Hannah Express till the wheels fall off. This is the most slept on player in the country. I just don't get how you can be averaging 25 and 5 and 5. At one point in the season, she was averaging 5 steals. Remember that average cut down to like 4.7 or 4.6. I don't get how you can be going that stupid and not have the millions of followers, the attention, the posting on ESPN. Check out some of her videos on YouTube right now. And there aren't even a lot of views on her videos. It makes no sense. So if you don't know, I'm going to put you on. I have talked about her on the channel uh, before, but I guess I haven't talked about her enough. Hannah Hidalgo, if you're going to watch any player this upcoming women's college basketball season, 
Hannah Hidalgo, Notre Dame. She is only a sophomore. That kills me because she could be a professional right now. She could be in the WNBA right now. She's 5'6". You wouldn't know she's 5'6". Like in, in the WNBA and especially in women's basketball, a lot of these undersized guards, even though they're killers, once they get to the W, the W doesn't really... Undersized guards t tend to you know, tend to phase out a little bit in the WNBA. I don't see this happening with Hannah Hidalgo. I really don't see this happening with Hannah Hidalgo. She's just, when you watch her, she's, you know what, you know what makes her different? A lot of guards, a lot of guards in the WNBA and a lot of guards in women's basketball, they don't necessarily like the paint. Like they don't like attacking the paint. They don't know how to get around bigs. They don't know how to finish over bigs. They don't know how to finish through bigs. That is not a problem for Hannah Hidalgo. So that's why like, when we say she's five six, if you watch her, she plays like she's six foot. And let me just say this: it is a, if she was six foot, bro, this shit would be clipped. Like <laughs> this shit would be clipped for everybody. So again, number one on my list, Hannah Hidalgo. Do not sleep on her. Hannah Hidalgo, Notre Dame. She's basically going to be on a stack Notre Dame team. Olivia Miles is returning from injury. Sonia Citroen. We're gonna get into my number two since we're talking about Notre Dame. Number two on my list. Maddie Westfeld, her teammate, Hannah Hidalgo's teammate. If you haven't heard of Maddie Westfeld, this girl lo probably low-key got the best shooting form I've ever seen in women's basketball. Low-key, high-key, low-key, high-key, low-key, high-key. Maddie Westfeld is a bucket herself. I don't, I don't know what else to say about Maddie Westfeld other than if you like Kiki Ariafin, if you like a Kiki Ariafin, you would probably like Maddie Westfeld. And in a way, even though Kiki Ariafin has a higher draft stock, I would say that I think Maddie Westfeld is a little bit more versatile than Kiki Ariafin. Kiki Ariafin is a walking double double, don't get me wrong, but Maddie Westfeld is really, um, she can damn near do everything. Damn near. And one thing I really look at, um, when I'm covering these players, especially when I start looking at their skill set, I start to see how versatile they are in their skill set. So let me let me try to explain this. Maddie Westfield, she can shoot the three. She can shoot the uh, mid range pull up. She can shoot going right. She can shoot going left. Those are like some of the many things I start to look at when I start scouting a player. When I start looking at players like, OK, you can shoot. Okay, that's the given. The given is you can shoot the mid-range, you can shoot the pull-up, you can shoot the close shot, you can shoot the three. Now I start looking at how are you getting your shots and how how are you how comfortable are you with readjusting shots? Because obviously it's basketball, not every pass is going to be perfect. So I start looking at the player, like how okay, can you gather going one, two to your right? Can you gather going one, two to your left? You're off balance. Can you set yourself up well? Maddie Westfeld low-key is one of the best shooting bigs in college basketball. I can't say enough. I I forget why I even got whiff of Maddie Westfeld. I can't remember what it was, but it was two seasons ago. I don't remember why I was watching Notre Dame. I don't know how I came across Maddie, but I started watching her. I was just like, damn, her form, nice. Turnaround, fades, jumpers, nice. She was carrying with Hannah Hidalgo this season for Notre Dame. And I remember just watching two years ago and I was just like, damn, she nice. Came back next season, she slimmed up, she got stronger. I don't, there's like there's nothing bad to say about Maddie Westfeld. The only thing I want to see her improve on this season is just her handle. If Maddie Westfeld, not saying she has a bad handle now, but if Maddie Westfeld improves her handle like 15%, bro, it's it's gonna get actually spooky. And she's she's in mock drafts right now. She's at like number 11, uh, number number 10, number Maddie Westfeld to me. If I'm GM of any of these teams with lottery top four picks or maybe up until I think New York has the top uh, has the seventh pick in the first round, the next draft, 2025 draft, there's no way Maddie Westfeld falls out of the top seven. Again, she's number two on my list. I believe she's slept on. If Hannah Hidalgo can be slept on, Maddie Westfeld can be slept on. So again, check out Maddie Westfeld. Uh, she's number two on my list. She plays for Notre Dame, same team as Hannah Hidalgo. All right, number three on my list. This this player low key is getting like she really she really going through kind of like not even a tough time personally or like playing wise, but the media is giving her a tough time. The fans are giving her a tough time. They're out here calling her 
Haley Van L and shit like that. We got to stop. We got to stop this shit. We got to stop the disrespect. This is Haley Van Lith, okay? Third on my list, I'm really excited to see Haley Van Lith go off this season and just, just build back her reputation that was that was inaccurately tainted just because of an off season and a bad fit. You know what I'm saying? I think we forget that Haley Van Lith is still a bucket and is one of the best guards in college basketball. So I don't want to I don't want to sit here and and act like Haley Van Lith isn't good. The reason she's number 3 on my list though is because of her transferring to TCU. That should be really interesting. I'm not sure what the hell she's going to do at uh at TCU. I don't I'm not sure if that's the best place for. I'm not I'm not going to say I'm not sure if it's the best place, but I can't I can't gauge I can't gauge what she's going to be able to do at TCU. Is she going to be running point guard? Is she going to be running shooting guard? Whatever. Um I forgot to give I forgot to give improvements and stuff that I want to see from players. So let me just say um if I'm starting at the top real quick, let me just recap this. From Hannah Hidalgo, what I want to see this season. It was the most notable thing I saw with her game and I think that it showed up in her last game of the season where she went 4 of 17 um in the NCAA tournament in the March Madness tournament. What was it? It was it was either she struggled with shooting to her left, I think, pulling up shooting to her left. Or was it to her right? Because she shoots right shoulder. I think it, uh, yeah, I think it was, she struggled with shooting to her left. And in the game against Oklahoma State, if I remember, against Tamia Gardner and them, when she went left off of the pick and roll, she wouldn't want to pull up left to right. You get what I'm saying? And I, I saw her struggle with that. So if she get, if she fixed that part of her game, she's going to average probably 30 this season. No bullshit. So that's what I want to see Hannah Hidalgo improve on. Maddie Westbelt already said I want to see her improve on her dribble. Haley Van Lith, what I want to see her improve on this season, if any one improvement I want to see her make, is probably her handle. No, Sorry, not, not her handle. My bad. Her handle at the point guard position. I want to... I don't think LSU was the best place to develop her guard skills and they said and she said that's why she's there anyway it's just like no that's fucking cap they're just you know coming up with something to say Haley van lith i want to see what type of point guard she is not saying that she's going to be running point guard and whatnot but as she goes to the WNBA and as she tries to boost her draft stock up again if you will to me her draft stock didn't go down like i still see Haley van lith as a bucket i would still if she falls out of the first round, I'd still be surprised. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she goes early second round, sure. But if she falls out of the first round, that's kind of crazy to me because we'll, we'll get into that later. But I do want to see Haley Van Litt's control and understanding of the point guard position increase a little bit. I don't want her coming into the WNBA draft where people still have question marks about whether she can run the one. I think we all know she's a bucket at the two, but for the most part, she is not, she is what, five, seven, five, eight. She is not like a Zaya Cook, who is a true five nine and can run the one and the two respectively well. Like she's not a Zaya Cook. You know what I'm saying? Zaya Cook has the defense to where you can put her at the one, you can put her at the two, she can guard both, and she can go get a bucket and she can run the she can run the point guard position. She's a scoring guard, but she can still run the point guard position. She she can still facilitate well. With Haley Van Lith, I still got that question mark over your point guard ability. So that's the one place I want to see Haley Van Lith improve. But again, I'm excited to see what she does at TCU. It really should be interesting because TCU does have some talent. She is going to be the main star there. It's going to be interesting to see what she does at, at TCU. Moving to number four on my list. This is a player that I low-key think had one of the best battles in college basketball last season it was actually hannah hidalgo versus her and damn near i would i would put it up there as like top five game of the season last season um she plays for fsu tanaya lotson um this tanaya lotson was a sophomore she's going to be a junior this season she and hannah hidalgo they went <laughs> if you <laughs> if you've never seen a a game where have you ever seen a game where it looks like the game speed is on 99 I'm pretty sure they traded 30, 30 bombs. Like Hannah had 30 something. She had 30. They were, 
look at the high, watch the highlights of that game fsu versus Notre dame from last season watch the highlights of it tell me they did not have the sliders up they woof woo hannah this way outpacing this way tonight i'm just like damn hannah fast as shit here come tonight or fucking going back and forth i was i was so dizzy watching that game bro they were actually pacing the hell out of it everyone else had like the game speed on like maybe 80 Hannah and Tanaya had the game speed on 99. They were going back and forth trading big buckets. Hannah somehow got the dub again. Again, ACC player of the year. But Tanaya Lotson is a bucket herself. Undersized guard again, but kind of like Hannah, they are not, they're not the typical undersized guard. You get what I'm saying? You're not going to see them go into the paint drive into the paint see a big coming at them and pass the ball out that's that's that those days are over for the undersized guards like hannah hidalgo and tanaya lots and i see are the ones leading the charge on that and it just makes them it really makes their gameplay like six foot and over you get what i'm saying so tanaya lots is basically the same thing she's a i dare i say a combo guard she can get you a bucket she can run the floor she can be your floor general she does kind of remind me of a Haley van lith because she scores so much to the point where it's just like damn are you a two or an actual one um one improvement i would like to see from tanaya lotson if i'm if i'm remember her remembering her gameplay correctly i did she can't shoot the three ball she can't shoot the mid-range she gets to the bucket really well maybe maybe an improvement from from three i think with a player like her with her speed if she becomes maybe a maybe a 38 38 and up three-point shooter is shit will get actually spooky I can't remember her three-point stats right now, but if I'm going off the top of my head, I don't think it was 38. I hope I'm not messing up her uh, free throw and three-point percentage. But if she can be 38, 39% from three, she averages 25 plus this season too. Because if you have to pick your poison on whether she's going to beat you to the hoop or stand at three-point line, knock down shots, like good luck. <laughs> good luck. So I uh, definitely got Tania Lotson, Tania Lotson. She's my fourth a pick fourth most exciting player i'm hoping to see again please watch these players they they don't get the spotlight that they should but i'm telling you can trust me i don't recommend no bad shit i don't recommend no bad music no bad movies i don't recommend no bad sports no bad video games i don't recommend bad shit so if i'm recommending these players to y'all make sure y'all watch these players okay tonight lotson is number four now number five a lot of you definitely haven't heard of this player now i did say maddie westfield probably has the most pretty or prettiest form shooting form in basketball and i think she does i think she's number one however if you've ever watched this player play this player her jump shot low-key stuck on automatic like that shit don't change and it's impressive to me because i don't have i actually don't have a consistent shot so i when i watch her play it's just like is in the pocket kind of reminds me of a you know me i don't like comparing to men's basketball but it kind of does remind me of ray allen a little bit her name is reagan richardson she plays for duke university i believe she is a rising senior this season um you might have heard about her from her march madness performance i i think she beat up on <laughs> she beat up on ohio state I think she beat up on Celeste Taylor in Ohio State. She kind of went crazy. Uh, I think she dropped. She had a 30 bomb in one of her games. Reagan Richardson, I have to say, I caught wind of her maybe midway through the season. And then I was just like, oh, she popped off in March Madness. And I was just like, damn, I pro probably should have been following her a little bit harder. But Duke, Duke was so sketchy last season. It was just up and down. Again, Hannah Hidalgo walked into freaking North Carolina, dubbed him. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to make this video about Hannah Hidalgo, but you, you see why I keep calling her ACC Player of the Year. Anyway, they're like she freshman killing all these upperclassmen. Either way, Reagan Richardson is still a bucket. Um, one improvement I want to see from her this season, maybe a little bit more. If I, again, I have to remember her game a gameplay correctly because her mid range is on lock. Her three point uh three point shooting is on lock. I do want to see a little bit more facilitation from or facilitating ability from these players. A lot of the time these players are really good scorers. They don't understand that becoming a better facilitator and becoming a better passer is the way to boost your points per game. And I think that gets a loss a lot of the time. It's that's definitely something I want to see with Juju Watkins again. If you want to 
continuously score, right? If you want to get the defense off you and so you can still have 1v1 battles, you have to become a better passer. You have to become a better facilitator. If you want to make sure that teams can't double you or teams can't ice you, then you have to become a better facilitator. So I would like to see Reagan Richardson step up a little in the assist category, her passing, because once you get the passing down, once you average those five, six assists, uh, I think that's what I think when you boost that assist per game, you will also see that rise in points per game because now the defense, you, you're you keeping the defense humble, okay? So those are my uh, five players. Hannah Hidalgo, Maddie Westfeld, Haley Van Lith, uh, Tania Lotson, Reagan Richardson at five. And my honorable mentions, I do want to roll out some of them. AZ Fudge, she's going to be returning from injury for UConn. Uh, Sonia Citron, who plays for <laughs> who plays for Notre Dame as well. Notre Dame actually has a stacked team. And again, with Olivia Miles coming back, they could definitely make a deep run into the playoffs. Um, Juju Watkins, I am looking to see, just like what I talked about with Reagan Richardson, I am looking to see for someone who scored, what was it, 27 points, 27 plus points, or was averaging 27 plus points last season in her debut college season. I'm looking to see how her facilitating, how her passing ability is, because when you saw her in March Madness, UConn was able to shut her down because she she didn't really know how to manipulate the game, right? So I'm really looking to see how her facilitating abilities become. So Juju Watkins is on uh, my honorable mentions. And last on my honorable mentions is Ayoka Lee. Uh, she plays for Kansas, uh, Kansas State, KSU. Yes, she plays for Kansas State. Ayoka Lee is a player, I think, she does her thing and like that's it but i kind of want to see more dog out of aoka lee this season because she can be going high first round easily but i want to see more dog from her this season i want to see double double i want to see some blocks like i actually want to see her take over the season i want to see her in player of the year talks i don't want her to just come onto the floor and just take the like just go through the game and like take what she gets. No, I want her to go out and kill. I want her to stomp on people this season. So that's why she's on my honorable mentions list. But that is all for the most entertaining players to watch uh, this season. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Leave a like. Tell me who you're excited to see on my list and on your list. Until then, till the next video, I'll see you guys. Take care. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Peace.